Welcome back to the channel. In today's class, we'll be looking at parallelogram law of vectors. We'll see how to resolve vectors when they're inclined at an angle. If you have an object, like probably it's a car, and it's being pulled by two forces, let's say pulled by force A and also pulled by force B. Now, if it's pulled in the same direction this way, Obviously, these two forces, A, force A plus force B, are in the same direction and they will come together to resolve them. You add them together. Now, if you have this same object acting under both forces and say this force A is being pulled in the right direction, while force B takes to the direct left of force A. Obviously, the resultant R of these two forces will become force A minus force B. Now, the challenge becomes when you have this same object, but it's being pulled by two forces inclined at an angle to each other. Now, this is where we'll find parallelogram law of vectors being very important. If I have force A and force B being inclined at an angle to each other, we will have to employ parallelogram law of forces or vectors to find a resultant. Now, what is parallelogram law of forces? Parallelogram law of forces tells us that if I have two forces acting at a point, let's assume this is point O, and my force A and force B are now inclined at an angle. This is force B. Parallelogram law of force of vectors tells us that these two forces or these two vectors will represent both sides of a parallelogram. Now let's complete the parallelogram this way. You complete the parallelogram this way. So I'm drawing into my figures. Now this is the side B. This side obviously becomes what side B. And this side also is side what? A. It's directly opposite this angle and is parallel to it. Now, by the rule of parallelogram law of forces, parallelogram law of vectors tells us that these two forces can simply be represented by the two opposite sides of a parallelogram. Now, and the resultant vector, the resultant vector would be represented by the diagonal of the parallelogram such that the diagonal of this parallelogram r becomes the resultant of this vector so if i have this then i can now begin to employ trigonometric functions to solve for my r in both magnitude and direction now let's get started let's get into this example we'll use this example to understand it further now if two forces 2 Newton and 3 Newton acting at a point O are inclined at an angle of 60 degrees. Now, they are acting on the point O and they are inclined at an angle of what? 60 degrees. Now, remember that parallelogram law of force of vectors tells us that they form the two sides of the what? Of the parallelogram. Now, when I cannot complete this, we can complete it this way so that this is 2 Newton and this is 3 Newton. Now, this, the question tells us that they act at an angle at 60 degrees to each other. Now, if they act at an angle of 60 degrees to each other, parallelogram law of forces or vectors tells us that I have my resultant, which is the diagonal of this parallelogram, becomes the resultant of both forces. So, if I have 2 Newtons here, obviously, I'll have 2 Newtons here. If I have 3 Newtons here, obviously, I'll have what here? 3 newton. Now, if I have 60 degrees at this side, definitely the opposite side here will be what? 60 degrees. Now, remember that here I'll have theta and here I also have what? Theta. Now, 60, the sum of angle in a parallelogram is equal to 360. So, I can conclude that theta plus theta plus 60 plus 60 is equal to 360. That's sum of angles sum of angle in my parallelogram in my parallelogram 
now so that 2 theta will be equals to 60 uh, 2 theta plus 60 plus 60 that's 120 is equals to 360 now 2 theta now is equals to 360 minus 120 that is equals to 240 so that divide both sides by 2 2 here is 1 2 here is 1 2 in 240 2 here is 1 2 in 240 is 120 so that conclusively you can see that theta which is the angle at this point is equals to 120 degrees now with this we already have our triangle defined now I have my triangle this way now so that this side now is my 3 newton this point is my 2 newton this flows in this direction this moves in this direction and this moves in this direction so that there's an angle here let's call this angle alpha and the angle here we have defined it to be what 120 so we are left to solve for r now if you if you remember your cosine rule conveniently you can use your cosine rule to solve for r if you miss our lesson where we explain how to use cosine rule please do look in the description below we'll place a link to our lesson on cosine rule remember from cosine rule that c square is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos cos c so that we'll be saying that r squared will be equal to the square of the two adjacent sides or the two opposite sides rather that's equal to 3 squared plus 2 squared minus 2 into 3 into 2 cos 120 so that r squared now will be equals to 9 plus 4 minus 2 times 3 that's 6 6 times 2 that's 12 cos 120 so that r squared now will be equals to 9 plus 4 that's 13 minus 12 cos 120 that's 0 0.0.5 now, so that that's equals to 13 minus 13 plus, sorry, cos in the second quadrant. Cos in the second quadrant is negative, such that if cos in the second quadrant is negative, this minus 0 0.5 is equal as negative 0 0.5. Now, minus times minus becomes, becomes plus. 0 0.5 times 12, that's 6. So, this is what? This is 19. R, R squared is equals to 19. So that R now will be equals to the square root of 19. Using my calculator, we'll come up with the square root of 19 to be the same thing as 4.36 Newton. Now with this, getting R, solving for R to be equals to 4.36 Newton, we can now go ahead and solve for the and solve for alpha, which will tell us about the direction of r now since r now we've gotten r to be equals to 4.36 newton now we can now solve for the direction of r remember from this triangle that we have alpha here now to solve for alpha i prefer to use sine rule sine rule will make it easier so remember our sine rule says a over sine a is equal to b over sine b and is equal to c over sine c. We we'll also place a link in the description to our lesson on sine rule in case you need further studies on that. Now, now our from this triangle, we could conclude that 2 over sine alpha should be the same thing as 4.36 over sine 120. So that 2. So that's 2 now over sine alpha is the same thing as 4.36 over sine 120. So that sine alpha will be the same thing as 2 sine 120 over 4.36. Sine is positive in the second quadrant. So that this is the same thing as saying 2 sine 60 over 4.36 which is if you punch this in your calculator you should come up with 0 0.5956
Now, if alpha, sine alpha is equals to 0 0.5956, obviously alpha is equals to the sine inverse of 0 0.5956, which is equals to 36.6.6 degrees. With this, I hope you understand how to solve for the resultant of two forces inclined at an angle to each other using parallelogram law of vector.